Welcome to the weekly Baseball Brew Crew podcast, keeping baseball history alive, one craft beer at a time, wherever you are watching us or listening to us. Uh, give us a like and a follow. And if you love beer with your baseball, please tell a friend. Here is the lineup card for today. Let's do it. In the leadoff spot is our VP of content development here at the Baseball Brew Crew. It is Angelo Trinidad. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing wonderful. Good evening, gentlemen. It is Tuesday night. The feeling is right, and it's the best night of the week with my favorite guys. So, uh, and yes, as uh, Michael said, I am the VP of content development, and trust me, content is developing. So, I will be headed to the front row card show. Um, at Front Row Card Show on social media, um, February 4th and 5th at the Tuscany Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I will be vlogging my experience. And uh, you guys are going to come on a hunt with me for some cards for the PC. So stay tuned for that, February 4th and 5th. Love it. Nice. Love it. Nice. Exciting. At a casino, too, no <laughs> less. Yes, sir. It'll be, uh, it'll be a good time. And uh, friend of the show, uh, Mark Deregula will be uh, coming along with me, and uh, actually a friend that I met through the hobby community will be joining me as well. Uh, he actually opened up one of his mystery packs, uh, Clee to LV Collector, the mystery packs that I opened here. Fantastic. Nice. Well, thank you so much. Next, he's the field correspondent and senior research analyst of the Baseball Brew Crew. It is Kevin Lyon. Well, Angelo can attest to this. Not only is content developing, but what's developing where we live is hopefully the end of this "quote unquote" severe weather that we've had. If we've you know we've actually got rain here, so luckily we didn't. Our houses didn't float away down the coast. So <laughs> we're glad to be here again on a Tuesday night, ready to talk some good old baseball and beer. Love it, love it. Hitting third is the Goodwill Ambassador and the Sultan of Swig at the Baseball Brew Crew. It is Cowboy Jack Tarango. I'm the king of hops. There is none higher. Suck MC should call me sire. To burn my kingdom, you must use fire. I won't stop drinking till I retire. Yo, it's your boy, the one and only living legend, the national treasure, the Sultan of Swig, the Goodwill Ambassador, the Hops King, Charlie Guzzle, Cowboy Jack Durango! <laughs> Woo! Let's get it started, boys. Brother, I based on those dope rhymes and that dope hat i have another nickname to add to the list of nicknames brother you're looking at the one and the only compton cowboy there it is <laughs> can, I, can i just say something here i believe that is the first nickname that jack did not come up with himself that hey, is awesome. first time for everything <laughs> you, know, you got about 250 that you created now you got one of your own <laughs> Charlie Guzzle is tremendous. Charlie Guzzle in the Hop King. Uh, I'm ripping off my hero, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> that is tremendous. Well, thank you for being here. My name is Michael Mondragon. I'll be your humble host for the festivities tonight. As tradition on the show, we always bring a new and unique craft beer to review and enjoy. So what are you drinking tonight? Let's start off with Angelo Trinidad. All right. So tonight the beer I'll be talking about is actually when doing my research on this, I discovered that this is actually short lived isn't the name of the beer. It's the name of a series of beers uh, that made West uh, paired with other breweries on. They paired up with about six or seven breweries to create the short lived series. So different types of IPAs. Uh, this one uh, is uh, teamed up with field work. Brewing Company. This is a West Coast IPA. Uh, this one is 7% ABV with no IBU listed. Um, this is brewed with the finest Nelson Nectaron and Waumea hops. Uh, the rich Southern Hemisphere hop combination unleashes tropical fruit aromas with notes of intense grapefruit, passion fruit, and guava, while the lean malt profile leaves this IPA finishing dry and refreshing. So it's interesting about this. There's no IBU listed. If I had to guess, this would probably be anywhere between 25 and 35 IBU. What's interesting about this beer is because of the citrus uh, notes within the beer, um, it the flavor is like a hazy 
but it's dry like a traditional IPA. Ooh. So definitely a, a easier uh, drink. Definitely a drink that would be great ice cold on a warm summer day. Uh, could also potentially be a breakfast beer, Cowboy Jack. Um, so uh, yeah, so yeah, this one this is a good one, and um, you know I've been uh, been a fan of Made West stuff. This is I think the the third time I've had a Made West uh, beer um, and uh, located in Ventura. So if I ever find my way back up the coast, um, I'll be sure to, uh, to pop in and stop by, but I uh, check out the short lived series. They teamed up with a bunch of other breweries in the series. So if you could find it, uh, I suggest you go check it out. And I found this obviously, or, or no surprise, uh, my local trader Joe's. So. Nice. Nice. And uh, yeah, I was, I was looking this up as well. And I, it's, it's cool. Like all these collabs, I mean, like uh, there's so many of them now and uh, they, they're all like really great. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to see all these breweries getting together and making even better beer. So right. um, yeah, uh, Kevin, uh, we were talking about like the, the Highland Park and, <laughs> and uh, Radiant and, and uh, uh, Highland Park did some with some other places. Well, last week you had the one of everywhere that's right that exactly so i mean it's it's a it's an embarrassment of riches when it comes to collaboration so uh yeah no, definitely. I, I, go for it I, i'm i'm loving seeing another uh, another brewery that we haven't heard of before yeah, and actually there's there's uh in the short-lived series there's um there's, there's six of them total um, and I've only heard um, of Pizza Port. So they did one with Pizza Port. They did one with Alvarado Street Brewing, uh, Artifacts Brewing, which I've, I've heard of, but I've never had a beer from there. They're actually uh, by you. Artifacts yeah. is actually in San Clemente. Um, Bur- Burgeon or Burgeon mm-hmm. and Hubble Sea yeah. Brewing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So very, very cool. So yeah, thank you for that. It's, uh, it's good to know about these. I, I, in fact, I looked down on their timeline and I didn't even see this one. I had to go back a little bit. So this one came out, um, I would say maybe a couple months ago, maybe. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely glad you did this one. So thank you so much for that. Yep. Uh, next Kevin, tell uh, us about this one. Are you, are you sure it's me? Cause I mean, who it's, why would I go down the street to Radiant? Well, I went home. Because <laughs> you live there. Because you live there. I, I went by the house, I, you know, Saturday afternoon. Uh, and I was like, oh, what's this new one? And I'm like, ooh, it's a 9.7 double. I'm like, ooh. all right, well, I have to go to L.A. So I know you're not going to believe me, but I got just a little taster just to try it. And this is called Don't Have to Ask Me Twice. So this is a new double IPA, 9.7 jacks. I know you're going to like that. Breakfast beer. Exactly. <laughs> hey, so can you brew a DIPA for the cold rainy season that is January in SoCal? Don't have to ask me twice. Welcome to DIPA season, our newest double IPA, a 9.7 clear beer that doesn't skip on flavor. Citrus forward and zesty with a <clears throat> medium bitterness and balanced hop character. Transport yourself with tropical flavors of melon and green papaya with a boozy warmth and slight undertones of dark pine and white grapefruit. Okay. I know what you're asking me. Do I really like this beer? Well, you know, <laughs> you don't have to ask me twice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a fun note, the reason why I also want to try this is a uh, friend of the show, I I got I gave two of these cans to uh, Excalibur over the weekend at uh, oh. Gorilla. I've been telling him about Radiant, so I'm like, all right, let me bring you a couple and I bought this one and a couple and another uh, recent IPA that came out. So I'll hear back from how he enjoys it. Gre- yeah. Grease in the old palm ski for tickets. <laughs> I mean, no, I, you know what? He's a he's a friend of the show, my tag team he's partner for tw- twenty years. All right. Once and a I worker, wanted- always a worker, baby. I dig of course. it. He, he, he hooked me up before, and I bought him lunch. But I'm like, you know what? Here, have some beers. Why not? <laughs> um, I believe Taro and Excalibur were uh, their tag team was called the Thin Tower. Excuse me, no. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, oh, that's not it. How dare you? Some fan had that had the audacity. We call us the Thin Towers because we were called the Twin Towers. It's 2000, by the way, not 2001. <laughs> we were the Twin Towers. We were thinking of Hakeem Olajuwon and Ralph Sampson. All right, Michael Mondragon. <laughs> hey, so, my bad. All right, thank you. But some guy went to the Thin Towers, and I had to hide because I was laughing so hard when he said that. Was, that was perfect. Tr- that was if you ever guy. saw Wait. us together, yeah. I mean, you guys were two very muscular, barrel-chested <laughs> men, so 
Yeah. Best chest in the West, baby. Yeah. We're, we're still an 11. We look like an yes. 11. <laughs> <laughs> you know about turning to 11? We turned it up to 11. That should have been your tag team name, 11. <laughs> I, know, I, have. I wish I would have thought of that. Uh, <laughs> well, great. it's never too late, right? That's, That's right. True. Yes. Yes. You're, you're yes. officially not retired, but. Uh, oh, good uh, gosh. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's I got to be like, Jack, I got to drink until I retire. So I'm yeah. never going to retire. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Cowboy Jack, you're up next. So my brothers, we're all aware of my greatness. I mean, there's two men on this earth better than me, and I'm both of them. <clears throat> but a little known fact about me is I'm a feminist. So that's why I was so excited when I stumbled upon Greenwood Brewing located in downtown Phoenix, which is just a mere 12-minute walk away from Chase Field if you want to check out a ball game. In an industry largely dominated by men, Greenwood creates approachable craft beer that opens the door for women to feel welcome in the world of craft beer. They bring empowerment, confidence, inclusivity, all in one powerful and purposeful pint. So if you have the opportunity to stop in, try a Herstory Pale Ale, a Warrior Hazy IPA, or their super unique Rosemary IPA that's brewed with rosemary, tell them that the Valley of the Sun's favorite son, Cowboy Jack Durango, sent you and enjoy. Nice. Yeah. When I, when I learned about this, I was super excited because, it. I mean, craft beer is, we're thinking... It's guys like us. It's it is a very male dominated field. So so to see a woman break open the door and open her own brewery is, and it, I mean their beers look. I mean that that rosemary IPA is piqued my interest to say the least. I'm going to have to make a run downtown to grab one because I, I love IPAs. I love a fruity IPA, but what kind of elements is rosemary going to bring to it? So if you're in the neighborhood, check them out, support a woman owned business in a male dominated industry, help the good sister out and check out Greenwood. Jack, is this a relatively new place? Uh, no, they've been, so they, in 2017, they, they started a tap room. Okay. 2019 is when they got their micro brewers license and they started cranking uh, out their own beer skis. Yeah, so I was last there, I think in 2018 and it, to, to chase field, I was staying like a 10 minute walk <laughs> south of there. One, it was a brewery for 10 minutes. I didn't know about it, but obviously that, that's what I was Okay. Thinking. So they're North, they're North of chase. They're field. North. I was a little South. Right. Okay. So still, yeah. I would have went that extra jaunt for trying Rosemary IPA, of course. Yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah, it's a, it's 10, 10 minute walk north, but I mean, right, beautiful downtown. Downtown Phoenix is such a cool area. It doesn't get it doesn't get the love that that it deserves because the the arts. There's so many cool breweries down there. I mean, we should just take a week and spend all day for seven days. Drinking beer downtown. Uh, Phoenix. Uh, oh, in downtown Phoenix, I'm like, I do that now. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, what, what's the selling point for Kevin? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, what's new, right? <laughs> well, Jack, I want I want to thank you for um, for talking about this brewery. Um, and, and so you said you have not been here, right? No, sir, I have not. Well. I have. What? <laughs> I actually have a rosemary IPA. Stop. Um, for uh, we did not plan this, by the way. So not um, I'm not in my normal location. I uh, can tell by the echo in the room. Um, but I am actually uh, one mile uh, and a half away from this brewery. I actually no stopped way. there today and got a rosemary IPA. So um, <laughs> since since uh, since I'm out here and I will be seeing you at the end of the week, um, I, one, of, one of these has uh, your name on it. Um, so I'm going to try this rosemary IPA. And um, so let me first uh, say that I, I think that it was, uh, we talked about it. Unfortunately, they're no longer around. Indie Brewing. Mm -hmm. They did a collaboration that I had last year. Um, they did it with the Pink Boots Society, which I believe that um, 
that this is a part of because I okay. saw I, I looked at the website and the owner had the pink boots on. So and I and if I'm not mistaken, that had rosemary in it as well. Oh, really? So this is Arizona grown rosemary uh, that it's uh, there. So I'm going to try this right now. By the way, I can it's it, you can totally smell it on, on the nose. Really? It's, yeah. Yeah, and the Pink Boot Society, uh, from what I'm aware of, it's just all female brewers are in this Love group, it. and they and they actually do some collabs or some work together to make beers. Um, the only brewery I can think of uh, off the top of my head that's in our area that's female owned and run is Three Weavers, which is up more by uh, about a mile or so from uh, Inglewood. It kind of yeah, Inglewood's. It's about a mile or so east of SoFi Stadium in the Forum, and also by the famous uh, Randy's Donuts. If you know where that, if you, you would know where Randy's Donuts, you saw it. You've been yes. yes. going off the freeway. Yeah. If you if you um, if you see the uh, the Simpsons, uh, yeah. Lard Lad is yes, uh, yes. That, Lard that, Lad that that's is what Randy's. that's based on. Yeah. It was um, uh, it wasn't wasn't Randy's. It was also featured in uh, Iron Man Two. I think. Oh, most yeah. likely. Yeah, it's it's one of those. Yes, he was sitting. He was sitting in the donut. Yeah. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So this is the Rosemary IPA by Greenwood <laughs> Brewing, seven point two ABV, fifty six IBU, and it actually it fifty six seems high. Um, right. I bet it, it seems like it's it's a little bit lower than that. It doesn't taste as hoppy as that, but maybe maybe a little bit. Um, dry hopped with fresh Arizona grown rosemary sprigs and Cascade hops. This American style IPA is earthy, grass, grassy, and crisp. Uh, perfect description of that one. So yeah, so here you go. Ro oh, uh, Greenwood Brewing. There you go. Love, it. Lo love it. to see love to see good sisters out there making good beer. Love it. Now, so that's a little bit out of your wheelhouse. You go for more of a of a juicy IPA, yeah. more of a hazy. How does that how does that stack up in your wheelhouse of beers? It's it, different. It's, it's a, it's different, but it's um it's very uh it's very easy to drink, uh and it it, it does remind me of kind of like an Arizona beer. It okay. has that kind of Arizona beer flavor to it. The California beers, I think, are more um like the West Coast IPAs, is because right. they're they're juicier and and sure. uh, kind of more more, more uh, fruit based flavorful like you know like i said the hazies taste like orange juice almost you know uh but right. in, a, in a good way and uh so yeah this is fantastic this it, i like this better than like just a, like a regular kolsch or mm. um or any, anything like that a, 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 or a lager i i like oh, yes. i would drink i would drink this it's still an sure. ipa you know right <laughs> yes yes as i say that's one thing amongst you know you know, this is it, this is kind of a heavy IPA group here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> it takes so a lot you, to us. Yeah. If you were going to pair that with a meal, what would you pair that with? Oh, that's uh, I, I and, and again, like exactly like the barbecue that the uh, barbecue, or, you know, gr grilling for sure, and, Got and it. You know, anything like that. It's it's one of those easy drinking type of beers. Um, not 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 super heavy. Dig um, it. Okay. Fantastic. Cool. I think that you'll like it a lot, and you'll get to taste it soon. I can't wait. I can't wait. I might have to barbecue then. <laughs> so let's do it. This is this day in baseball history for January 10th. That's right. Baseball history occurred in January. So let's get to it. January 10th, 1907. John McGraw saves the day when he prevents a runaway team of horses from injuring two West Coast women. The fiery Giants manager, his her heroic deed of stopping the wayward steeds occurs in the City of Angels. Now, I just read it as it was uh, put out there. Um, I can find no historical facts that this even happened um, anywhere but in this story, which is actually amazing. So I'm not sure if it's something that was made up or and the fact that they said it, it happened in the city of angels. Does that mean Los Angeles? Does that mean like uh, where you're at? Or like the fantastic, uh, the fantastics were built from the city of angels. Yeah, right. Like it, it, uh, okay, so. The thing that, I, that that's okay. So he stopped these horses from trampling uh, some women. But the thing that I want to talk about is not so much that. I want to talk about what's below this picture. So this picture is actually uh, head to toe. And I'm going to show it to you right now. I'm going to show you these these kicks. Wow. So, wow. Now, are these spikes? 
Or are these dress shoes? <laughs> these are dress <laughs> shoes. Definitely on, dress he's, shoes. A man, he's a manager. He's not a player. He has to. He has to look good. All right. I mean, <laughs> those I are... he wasn't wearing those because there's no way he's going to stop those horses wearing those. <laughs> <laughs> those are custom alligator skin <laughs> wow look at that <laughs> yeah so uh it, it was just funny because that, that's the first thing my eye went to um not it not his heroic deed i'm or his baseball thing i'm like are those dress shoes that he's wearing uh, <laughs> you have to know well you know what goes. here 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 at the baseball brew crew we ask the tough questions yes Yes, we we bring you the hard hitting journalism. Are they spikes? <laughs> Are they dress shoes? You make the call. You make the call. <laughs> Kevin, what was your question? I was. Uh, do you have to know what time frame this photo is actually from? Because John McGraw never looked young. He looks older here, though. Oh yeah, yeah. I was gonna. Uh, that's a good question. I, I actually. Um, I mean, I think he looks he looks old all the time. Like I look. Meet you know, meet you know, hundred and I mean, I'll look a hundred, so hundred and seventy-five. Yeah, I still look yes. like I'm in my fifty somehow. That you know, just for men, really works. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Good stuff. January tenth, nineteen twenty-eight. Giants owner Charles Stoneham, displeased with Roger Hornsby's abrasive style and gambling habits, trades his second baseman to the Boston Braves for catching prospect Shanty Hogan and journeyman outfielder Jimmy Welsh. During Hornsby's one-year stay in Boston, his third team in three seasons, the future Hall of Fame infielder will lead the major leagues in hitting with a 387 batting average, along with an out, uh, outstanding 498 on-base percentage while playing wow. and managing the seventh-place club. Wow. When when did the player manager role stop being a thing? What year? I think uh, Charlie Hustle, the Hit King, might have been the last one. I don't That's know. It. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hashtag do the research right now. I think Pete Rose might be the last one to actually wow. do it. Yep, you're absolutely right, Kevin. Yep, Pete Rose is the last one who managed from '84 to '89. Yeah, wow. and that, that was a big contention because they were saying that, you know, if he was betting on games, like he was the manager for, you know, he could influence the game in that way. Um, but he said that, um, it, you know, why why would he want to bet, bet against his team, you know, losing? You know, he goes, right. I would always bet on them winning. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy because during his career, too, he ended up managing for like, obviously, you're doing the research. 14 years, six different teams. So, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, he stayed in baseball. I mean, that almost sounds like a manager nowadays would have. Like, right. hey, can you imagine 14 years? Yeah, and six different teams, but who's counting? You know what I mean? Yes. And but, if I could, if I can make one more point, if you'll check out the kicks, still rocking the dress shoes. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so that I, I, there's something to it. We have to figure this out. We have to figure this out. I mean, I mean Kai Cobb, we know, is wearing spikes, but, you know. <laughs> now, what did you say that Roger Hornsby's batting average was in 1927? 387. Wow. That sounds low for him in that time span in the 20s. Yes. Like he hit over 300, like, at least two or three times from what I recall, you know? Yeah. Yeah, he was. Well, you were there early. those two or three times. Well, his <laughs> life, now, check this out. His lifetime batting average, 358. Wow, that's incredible. Like, Super yeah. low. What a loser. Jeez. Yeah, I know. I know. Nerd. I don't remember if that's the record or not, but he actually hit 424 in 1924. How about that? Wow. wow. Like 358, like, I, I mean, that's a bad like, – I don't even know if the batting champion even gets that high nowadays. <laughs> right, right, right. Which I don't know if that's just pitchers getting better, catching up. I mean, there's so many different variables that have changed over baseball for the last, you know, 75, 80 years. Yeah, Almost batting 100 years now. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. Yeah, Time batting is average just is not – uh, for me. Batting average is not even like one of the things like people like really are super enamored with anymore. I remember like uh, I, I think I think Angelo, uh, you reached out like who should I pick, uh, Tim Anderson or someone else? Yeah, yeah. And and like Tim Anderson was like it was the, um, was it Lindor? Uh, no. Oh, potentially, yeah, maybe. I'm sorry, I remember you asked me. It was for, yeah, Tim Anderson. Yeah. I can't remember. It definitely one of them was like, Tim Anderson. Yeah, yeah Tim like Anderson, like won, won the batting title, I believe, at one point. <clears throat> yeah. So. 
uh, a great hitter. And like, and, and, and I, what, what was the batting champ last year? You know, I was like, uh, I'm sure it, we couldn't even name him. But we used, used to be a, a, a bigger thing at the time. Oh my gosh, for sure. You know, it's crazy too. Is the last thing is that like or that record that 358 isn't even the all time record. Like Ty Cobb's lifetime batting average is 366. That's crazy. Nuts. Crazy. So January 10th, 1950, the Philadelphia Phillies officially abandon using the nickname of Blue Jays, a moniker that never caught the fancy of the Philadelphia fandom. The unpopular choice selected uh, in a 1944 contest from 634 entries received and over 5,000 letters from every state included the Bell Ringers, Keystones, Minutemen and Valley Forgers uh, <laughs> appeared as a logo on a sleeve patch uh, for the following two seasons. So, I mean, uh, who knew that they were the very first Blue Jays? Huh. Now, how how did they go from a Blue Jay to the Philadelphia Fanatic? I won't. I'll never understand how that happens, <laughs> Mister Philadelphia P Fanatic. I just I, I'll never get it. Well, it looks like this Blue Jay is taking his revenge on that Philly cap. I mean, he's just like yeah. pooping the ball out. <laughs> true. Right? It's either that or Dave Winfield is throwing the ball at that at that uh, Blue Jay. I don't know which it is. Yeah, these were these were the. I, I looked up the logos at the time, and you know these these were the these were the logos. That, that that was the that was the best they had in the fifties, huh? I guess so. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, Phillies, they can't all be winners. <laughs> so this is a very interesting one that I, I'm sure, um, uh, Kevin. This uh, yeah. you'll know you'll know this man very well. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my January tenth, yeah. nineteen fifty-seven. <laughs> Commissioner Ford Frick allows oh, no. Bing Crosby. Be part of an 11 man syndicate that made a successful bid to buy the Tigers to keep his token stock in the Detroit club, although he is part owner of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Wow. The famous singer who became one of the Pirates owners in 1946 presently has 16% of the share of the Steel City Club. I had no idea that Bing Crosby owned two teams at wow. one time. And, and that's <laughs> I didn't even know you owned one team, let alone two. I love that you said syndicate, and I'm like, whoa, what is Bing Crosby up to? You know what I mean? I'm <laughs> just I mean, come on, you don't get away of wearing a bow tie like that unless you're into some shenanigans and syndicates. So, Angelo, do you know who Bing Crosby is? I do know who Bing Crosby is. Do you really? Yeah. Angelo's a singer, man. What do you know him from? Just from the, some of it from his hits, man. Like you, primarily the Christmas, the Christmas songs, right? That he, he had he had put out. But yeah, definitely familiar with Bing Crosby. So well, of course, right. because Angelo sang his own Christmas song. Uh, yeah, Angelo, yeah. plug it, even though it's January. Hey, the Christmas song "Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire" by yours truly, Angelo Trinidad, available on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you stream your music. Available now. Nice. And nice. when Angelo's singing, it's always Christmas time, baby. <laughs> That's so right. What time is it when you sing, Jack? <laughs> The best time you, you'll ever have in your life. <laughs> well, I mean, I know that's true. I, well, <laughs> rap is even better. <laughs> well, for those who don't know who Bing Crosby is, uh, he was a singer and actor and one of the most popular and influential music artists of the 20th century worldwide. He made over 70 feature films and recorded more than 1,600 songs. He was a leader in record sales, radio ratings, and motion picture grosses from 1926 uh, to his death in 1977. Uh, one of his last appearances um, was a Christmas special um, taped in London in September of 1977 that aired weeks before his death. Um, and, uh, you know, they also, uh, it, and I remember this because I remember, I think it was 1982 on MTV, they played this video and it got super popular at the time. Um, but the, yeah, I, I didn't realize it was from like 77. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, so that, so he actually has a bit of pop and this is right at the end of his life. He had this wow. you know, huge Bowie was career. Like, yeah. And then Bowie's gigantic at this time span. And yeah. then for, for people who may not be as familiar with, with Bing Crosby, there's a modern recreation of this. Are you aware about this, Michael? Mm -mm. There's a modern version done yes. with 
Okay, you know what I'm talking about now? I do, I do. It's Will Ferrell. I don't remember if Will Ferrell's playing Bowie or Crosby, but is it John C. Wiley? Yes, it is. Yes. Well, they do. That's the, the, the video of them meeting and singing the song, and they do exact recreation of it. I'm just like, this is so bizarre. Cool. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's and, it's and, worth seeing. Do the research. And, and, the, and the video itself is very dry. It's like yes. it's almost like they're very uncomfortable with being uh, with mm -hmm. each other. And I guess there's a backstory that David Bowie uh, didn't want to sing with Bing Crosby or something to that effect. So I, I guess there was a little bit of heat, but uh, and it shows in the video. It's it's very it's kind of uncomfortable, but it's it's very dry. The whole yeah, thing. because it's set in a room where one of them's in there and the other one comes knocks on the door and comes in. They're having a very weird, uncomfortable conversation, and it leads to them singing "Little Drummer Boy," which I watch that going what is <laughs> it's happening here <laughs> it's bizarre to say the least but it's uh david, it's one of those david bowie, would, david bowie was upset that the old man didn't want to put him over right, right. Yeah. I, I i can imagine that bing crosby had some thoughts on david bowie uh, like, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was it wasn't into the act i'm sure um <laughs> well, he was like a, a nice handsome young man there not he, he not does, like he Come does. On. yes he's not he's not painted up yep all right january 10th 1991 in one of the worst trades ever made in baseball history the orioles send pitchers kurt schilling and pete harnish along with outfielder steve finley to the astros who for? Anybody want to guess? Uh, it, I, I know he played college at ASU. Uh, Where's my buzzer? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no idea. No ben. idea. Glenn Davis. Davis. Okay, Glenn, Big, who Glenn Big Baby Davis, right? Yeah. <laughs> Davis, who averaged 27 home runs in six seasons playing in the Astrodome, will hit only 24 home runs in three injury filled years as Schilling becomes one of the most dominant hurdlers in the game. Harnish and Finley develop into solid major league performers. If I'm not mistaken, um, Steve Finley, was, was he on the, the Diamondbacks team that won the World Series in 2001? I believe he might have been. He might have been too. Yeah. Well, I know if Schilling that. was. Schilling right. was on that team. Yeah. Look at like, Schilling looks like he's 17 right there. Yes. But well, hey, hey, nobody's ever heard of Glenn Davis, and he's still got a better reputation than Kurt Schilling. So <laughs> was the trade that bad? You know. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you said he looked like he was 17. Michael, you would know. What did Kurt Schilling look like when he was 17? Well, this was uh, – this, so this was 91. Yes. So I – I let's see, 85 It's when I uh, – he was a senior when I was a freshman. So, yeah, this this wouldn't have been long after that. So, he, if he was, yeah, he probably was – in his early twenties, obviously, yeah. Um, but yeah, this was early on in his career, and he was actually at the, I think at this time uh, he was um, still kind of hanging on. You know, he was kind of hanging on by a thread, but he was still ascending. But he he was finally when he made it to the Phillies. I think it was in ninety three. That's when he started like flourishing. I, I believe it was in ninety three. Uh, right. I don't have the stats in front of me, but I think that that and was it. And to confirm, Steve Finley, it was on those 2001 Diamondbacks. Wow. And I look at his lifetime stats. Dude, this guy should be like, like, like not just thrown out of the Hall of Fame consideration. This guy got 2,548 hits in his career. Wow. Who would have? Wow. That's, that's more than some Hall of Famers, to say the least. You know, and I don't mean just pitchers. I mean position players. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, he had 1,167 RBIs. I was trying to see if I could find a lifetime – batting average, but I don't see that here in, when I'm just really quickly doing the research. But, you know, I've got played a really, really long time, so, you know, and, and you don't get 2,500 hits without being a stalwart in baseball. Yeah, and, right. and Pete Harnish, I remember being a good uh, pitcher as well, so, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, he was good for a while, yeah. Yep. All right. So, January 10th, 2002, uh, Yankees signed White Sox free agent Southpaw David Wells to a two-year, $7 million contract to rejoin the team after trading him in 1999 to the Blue Jays, along with Graham Lloyd, Homer Bush, and Roger Clemens. For Roger Clemens, that is. 
<laughs> the 38-year-old left-hander known as Boomer, who missed most of the uh, second half uh, of last season due to back surgery, posted a 34-14 and record, including a perfect game in 1998 during his first two-year tenure with the team. Uh, and uh, he's better known uh, for... A book that that oh oh yeah oh Kevin <laughs> <laughs> we broke Kevin is it uh, safe to say that you don't have to ask him twice no <laughs> right. I, I, <laughs> great ah, call back oh man I got I got back in. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so um, he he wrote Excuse a book me. and it's it's incredible. Uh, and oh Kevin man, come on, let book. me do the plug ski. You got me a heads up on this. I got to do the plug ski. You got to be book. I didn't know this book existed, but by the name of it, I'm like, I had to buy it. Unfortunately, I have, I still have. Maybe I should just open up and read the passage. But it's called Perfect. I'm not Boomer on beer brawls, backaches, and baseball. It sounds like Cowboy Jack's story. Otherwise, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, because I'm, I'm sure he has many of all those things, <laughs> except baseball. You know, he didn't play baseball much until later in life. I saw him play baseball once, and he was he magnificent, like, magnificent to say the like, least. Like you know, the Bambino. I think it my one at bat. I had two bottles of beer in my back pockets. I had a cigar in my mouth. And I was playing shoeless. So yes, yes. <laughs> hey, and I got to second, baby. All right, you did you did. You did stand up. natural. I, I mean, he's talking about at, he, what he got the second after the game is what he's talking about. Oh, right, right. Yeah, not during the game. Not when <laughs> that, that was the after game. Yeah. So uh, we actually have a bookstore. If you go to uh, beerbaseball.com uh, forward slash books, and if you want to buy this or other books that we've talked about on our podcast, uh, we get a little kickback, and you get to learn uh, uh, about all these awesome things that we talk about and kevin like like he yes sir he he uh, david wells was a um a very colorful uh player to say the least yeah you want me to read a little passage from this Please. i just opened up the book to a random page okay. um i don't know if i can read all this but um <laughs> uh, it looks like we're, i'm gonna just start this in this case here all right i don't know what year this is i don't know anything else but i just opened it up to a random page here we go <clears throat> The photo on this page, by the way, can you slow me for a second? Sure. Just so you can see the photo on this page. It is a picture of him getting the key to the city from, yeah, that guy. Yeah, that Sorry. guy. That that mirror in New York. Who, no, it is not very well beloved. That's Paul Giamatti, right? Is that his name? Right. Yes. <laughs> the guy from uh, Sideways, right? And <laughs> Private Parts. Big bomb it. That's it. I mean, same, same, right? All right. Eight innings into a home game against the big spending bottom dwelling Orioles. We're down 5 4 of M. Armando Benitez on the mound and two runners on base. Bernie Williams is at the plate and with a hot, another high pressure moment in front of him. Armando blows it again. And I like it's italicized. This time he feeds Bernie a letter high cantaloupe of a pitch that practically explodes when Bernie connects. Three seconds later, we Yankees are up 7 5 with Tino at the plate. First pitch from Benitez, neck high and way inside. Tino bails, but ends up taking the pitch right between the shoulder blades. He goes down hard. Uh, you. I, 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 we, we, I can't swear. Sorry, sir. D Daryl Strawberry yells from the duck. Oh, I'm sorry. Del I didn't give proper context. I saw the F word. I'm like, All right. So the all uh, you, Daryl Strawberry yells from the dugout, and he sprints for the mound with Chad Curtis in tow. Benitez drops his glove and gets ready to rumble. The bench is empty, and just like that, we've got a slobber knocker at the pitcher's mound. Daryl dives in. Paul O'Neill roars. Uh, Benitez charges at straw, and now it's time for yours truly to teach his jabroni a lesson. At the edge of the infield grass, I intercept Armando's attack, grabbing Benitez by the neck and squeezing just hard enough to make reliever juice. Whatever that means. Uh, eyeballs bugged out. Armando ain't going anywhere. Let me go. He's screaming at me. Let me go. I fail to honor that request. Meanwhile, Benita's out of action. Orioles pitcher Alan Mills weasels his way into the pile and punches Daryl in the face. Sticking and moving, Mills is heading for the hills long before Daryl has any chance to return the favor. 
In the end, Benitez gets a fat eight-game suspension and a $2,000 fine. Daryl and Graham Lloyd, who you just mentioned, uh, each get clipped for three games in the grand, while Jeff Nelson and Alan Mills each take a two-game beatings and a $500 fine. Uh, I don't know what the – and there's something about a perfect game error. is wiped off the mat. I don't know what that is, but I just want to read that little tidbit. I really opened it up, and I saw that, and I, I was like, I, I'm like – Let's see what this is. I just saw the Benita's getting put, grabbed by the neck. I'm like, all right. That's the kind of stuff you can get in this book. Go to beerbaseball.com. Um, and I think we have the yeah, book, yeah, book we, site. We might, need, we might need a hazy history on David Wells. Right. Yes. Hazy. Yeah. Yes. But I literally just opened it up randomly that page. That was, see, look, there's no bookmark. I just have to open to it. Heck, I might have to make that a segment. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Wells that's segment. it. <laughs> I yeah, buy there so, the Python packs. I do. <laughs> yeah, so check out this link uh, and uh, support us and learn some more about baseball history. All right, so now we have Kevin. Rip and review with Angelo Trinidad. All right, Angelo is up with rip and review. Let me switch this around so we can get this going. And uh, Angelo, you're up. All right. So before we get to rip and review, I have a little bit uh, of mail I wanted to share with everyone here. So just a couple weeks ago when Ian was a guest host on the show, um, we had a conversation about what got me into the hobby. So it was actually uh, 2020 Topps Chrome. It was the first purchase I remember making on eBay. And it was a blaster box uh, because I wanted to chase some rookies. Most notably, I wanted to chase uh, Luis Roberts' rookie card. At the time, that raw that card raw was like a $50, $60 card. Obviously not worth that much now, but has a lot of sentimental value because it's the first card that I was chasing that I pulled. So I have it raw, but I wanted to seek the card in a PSA form. So I purchased a PSA Gem Mint 10 of Luis Robert 2020 Topps Chrome rookie card. So nice. this definitely has some sentimental value to me. So I wanted to make sure that I shared that with all of you. But now on to the main event. We have the brand new debut edition of 2022 Panini Capstone Baseball. So uh, per Panini, Capstone shows showcases today's and yesterday's top players who sit and have sat at the peak of excellence in the game. We're going to find eight cards per pack, 12 packs per box uh, in every hobby box. And we're going to find two autographs and two memorabilia cards per box on average. Oh, so wow. we got a we got a lot of cards to open up. So hey, without man, further four, ado, but, wait. You said f- there's two autos and two mems. Wow. Two autos and two mems. Nice. So four hits total. Now, um, for Panini, now is this like a higher end Panini package? Because I, I, you know, no, I, I'm very casual about this. Yeah, not um, not high end. So this one will probably run you about one twenty five, one thirty at the hobby shop. Um, I found it a little bit cheaper on the secondary market, um, but it's a debut product. So there's not, you know, people aren't clamoring. The hobby isn't clamoring. And again, with Panini, you have uh, the lack of MLB license. Mm-hmm. So um, you know, it's not really that that sought after. But these cards are gorgeous, and I'll give you a close up once I open this first pack. We'll look at the card in detail uh but without further ado boys let's get to ripping i'm gonna get to sipping yeah (laughs) so first uh first pack here so if you look at the design there's a little bit of a tricolor foil design there this is a rookie of rodolfo castro this um card is stylized very closely or similarly to um, Panini Zenith football. So um, that's kind of what it reminds me of a little bit. But you have a nice glossy finish, that tricolor, like rainbow foil. Then you have the back of the card there. So there's a good look at um, the hey, card. Angelo, yes. Um, who will be the rookies we're looking for in this in this set? So this is this year's uh, crop of rookies. So Bobby Witt Jr., J-Rod, Julio Rodriguez, Spencer Torkelson, um, Hunter Green, um, okay. just to name a few. That's who we'll be looking oh, right for. On. I don't have any minor leaguers in there or not. Thank yeah. you. So we got Kyle Tucker, Trey Mancini. Vidal Brujan rookie. We have a red Connor Siebold. I don't believe the reds are numbered. Yeah, reds are not numbered. So this is um, 
a, a parallel of the base card. I think this is called the um, the Luxury Suite series. So if you look at the finish, it's more of a matte finish, but it has like a I don't know if you can see that. There's like a little like triangular design on there. Mm-hmm. That's Tyler O'Neill. We also have a cool Wit Merrifield, and we have a crest insert of Mookie Betts for nice. the Dodgers. And that uh, parallel of Tyler O'Neill, that's not number one. No, they're just. A, I think it's like kind of like how um, what car the Panini Diamond Kings baseball. There's like the rookies have tier one, tier two, tier three. Okay. Select baseball, football, and basketball have three tiers. So like the baseball is um, field level, uh, club level, concourse stuff like that. So okay, thank you. Yeah, Kershaw there. We got Carlos Rodon. I love, Jordan, I love Carlos Rodon. Yeah, Jordan Romano. We have Yoan Moncada. We have a red of Teoscar Hernandez, who's a Mariner now, right? I believe he is, yes. Um, not numbered on the red, Brian Reynolds. Eli Morgan, rookie. And we have a, a, a Velo insert of Lucas Giolito. That's a cool looking card too. Yeah, yeah. super. Yeah. Cool. So the design on this cards are re- are really nice, and they're. Uh, I also didn't mention they're um, a thicker stock. So if you look here, it's kind of a thicker card stock. Okay. I would oh, say yeah. I would say maybe fi- maybe fifty five point. So cut twice the thickness of a standard card. Okay. We have Otto Lopez rookie from the Philadelphia, I mean Toronto Blue Jays. <laughs> I was like, what? Good well, job Jesse, you got me on that one. Jesse Winker. Oh, there mm-hmm. speaking of Tim Anderson, we have Tim Anderson red. Okay, we have a gold. This is our first numbered gold foil Jose Abreu. This is numbered two of twenty five. Wow. Nice. Yeah, best card nice. best card so far. So that's and that's not in that's how you haven't gotten your relics or or autos, or autos yeah. yeah. Alex Verdugo. We have a red Reed Detmers. That's nice. cool. Going to the PC. Right. Uh, that one's not numbered. We have a Summit insert of Francisco Lindor. The the inserts are so gorgeous in this. Yeah. I laughed. Yeah, that's your that. half of what I thought. I thought I'll see my answer Francisco Lindor. You got them the same pack. So yeah, there you go. All right. Thomas Zapucky, Matt Brash. Go for rookies there, right? There on. we go. Jordan Alvarez going to the PC also. We have a red Spencer Strider rookie. This is another uh, rookie that we want to look uh, look after. I have a hit there behind it, so I'll save oh, that. All right. So we got Tony Centillion rookie, Kyle Bradish rookie, red foil, and we got a new nice. age insert of Showy. Yeah, Ooh, check that there out. Go. That's cool. Nice. Nice. All right. All right. We so we have this is a peak. I think this is a mem. This is going to be a mem ca- peak mem card of Mike Soroka. Unnumbered piece of his jersey and or jock strap, but depending. On <laughs> well, well, that okay. Now I, I'm sorry to do this, but can you read the back to see if it actually says it's from a game? Because I I heard that sometimes it's just said, oh, not from actual. Yeah. Game. So this one is. Um, Player worn slash used. Oh, right so, on. That's cool. Yeah. That's so not so, so not game used, but it's player worn. So which yeah, means that's you've probably seen there's videos like on social media and on YouTube you can find of like players signing a bunch of cards and they're wearing like twenty jerseys. Yeah. So, and then that's how they say it's player worn. That's something. <laughs> hey, that's better than other ones where it's like not from any not from any specific event. game or event. Yeah. Yeah. How, how many how many jock straps do they wear? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to hashtag do the research. That's a, that's probably a good question uh, for Charlie Chugger well, to ask. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, after this, when he opens his next pack, I'll tell you uh, a jockstrap story, uh, Jack. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz Chisholm. We got O'Neill Cruz, another one of the big rookies we're looking yep, for. Nice. Uh, Greg Dykeman. Taylor Rogers. We have a Jaron Duran, red foil, Rowdy Telez. We have a uh, another gold foil. This one is not numbered though. Um, this is Joe Perez, rookie from Houston, and we have a New Age Trey Turner insert. So we're about halfway Jack. through. Uh, we're 
about halfway through the box now, and uh, we still have uh, yeah, three, not, three, hits. Saw three hits to go. So, so, and Michael could attest to this. So there was a, a minor league team about an hour and a half or so from here called the High Desert Mavericks. It was their last year, and they were literally selling – do I say those jock shafts, Michael? Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were so they were about everything. They're, you could buy like everything must like, go pants and that. Yep, so, there you go. Sorry, <laughs> bro. I saw that. I saw that Hunter Green. That got me going. I love Hunter Green. Go right on. Red Ronald Acuna Jr. We have a rookie nice. Edward Cabrera. We have Jose oh. Ramirez, and a summit insert of Joey Votto. Cool. Nice. Move this stack before it falls over. My goodness, you have like three big packs here to close it out. I know. That's pretty much. There, well, there's uh, no, there's still. What is this? Six packs to go. So. Oh, I thought. Packs. Oh, it's twelve packs. 12 I'm packs, sorry. I yeah, thought twelve oh, packs. I'm sorry. It's twelve packs. My bad. <laughs> Bregman, Alejo Lopez, Jeremy Pena, rookie, another big rookie that we were looking oh, yeah. for. <laughs> Gavin Sheets, Reese Hoskins, Sean Murphy. Kevin Smith and a deja vu of Fernando Tatis Jr. Nice. There you go. Oh, it's um sorry, de- the deja vu cards, it's a player from the past and a player from the present. So it's A Rod and Tatis. Oh, oh I was hoping been it. senior. I was hoping been Fernando Tatis Sr. That would have been a nice little <laughs> That would have been cool. But hey, hey, that's you know, but Griffey, that's well, you know, Angel's favorite player of all time. So I'll take I'll take A Rod any day of the week. <laughs> All right, we got Liam Hendricks. Shout out to Liam Hendricks. Keep fighting, brother. We're right. all with you. Yeah. yeah. Diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma earlier this year. <laughs> Johan Duran, Austin Hayes, Nestor Cortez, Red Foil. Uh-oh. Okay, so this is a uh, this is interesting. Oh. Because this is uh, our first auto yeah. of Otto Lopez. So we got an <laughs> auto auto today. <laughs> <laughs> And that's a crown auto from uh, Otto Lopez from the Toronto Blue Jays. Nice. So that's it. Nice. nice. Amazing. Amazing. What a cool looking card. Oh, yeah. We got Justin Turner, Javi Baez, Red Foil. And we're going to wrap it up with the insert crest rookie of Bobby Witt Jr. I, I want to say, like, are Dodger fans bitter because Justin Turner went to the Red Sox? I know. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I was telling a friend of the show, Dr. James Morgan, because uh, they actually named their son after Justin Turner. His name oh. is Turner. And uh, so I said, well, you're now you're going to have to change uh, your son's name. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then I and I proceeded by asking him, how does Syndergaard like his new name? <laughs> well, well, I was going to say, Angelo, I think it's only fair that they renamed their child Mookie because Mookie went from the Red Sox to the Dodgers. There you go. Yeah, but Ryan, but Ryan has a cat named after Mookie already. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Okay. Mookie cats. Yeah. <laughs> so, Joe Musgrove, J- Jeff McNeil. There we go. J Rod. Oh, all right on. Matt Olson, Spencer Torkelson, rookie in the red nice. foil. Ooh, in the red. Oh, yeah. super cool. Reese Hoskins. Trevor Story and a velo of Alec Manoa. It is kind of funny when you open these packs because, like, every time I see red, I don't know if it's going to be an angel, a Philly, or a red. Right. <laughs> Until you say who the player is. I'm like, wait, I'm trying to peek in quick. So I got three three packs left, and I still have one auto and one mem to go. Nice. What do we got? All right. Bryce Elder, Luis Robert, speaking of. Hey, yeah. Drew Ellis. Corbin Burns, get your beers ready, boys. That's the first. Is that the first? Yeah, I think it's our first beer. There you go, Mike. Red foil of Nolan Arenado. There you go. Uh, My longtime close personal friend, Nolan Arenado. That's right. That's right. We have a rookie of TJ Friedel, Tyler McGill, rookie, and another deja vu. This is Clayton Kershaw and Mackenzie Gore. So two current players, but Mackenzie Gore is. Rookie, so this is a rookie insert there. Man, Angela, you're gonna have two last pack mojos here. Two last pack mojos. Can can I just speak into existence a Bobby Witt Jr. auto or a Julio Rodriguez auto? Can, can I think we, I think you can. Yeah, I think can you can. Can that happen? You know, talk to the baseball card gods. 
<laughs> okay, so that's my auto, so we'll save that. This is the oh. mem, it's a little bit thicker pack. Okay. That's why I love that Angelo knows just by oh exactly right. Right. You right. Feel. I love it. Yes. I love it. Look at that great. thicky. All right, Joe Perez. Jose, That's what she another said. Jose Ramirez. <laughs> Alec Manoa. There we go. Um, Mike Trout. Ooh. Nice. Red <laughs> foil. Miguel right. Truch. Dig it. Miguel Truch. And uh, this is uh, enclosed player worn used material from the Los Angeles Dodgers. Andre Jackson. Dual patch. No. You got no. White, the white and uh, gray. Andre the Giant it, Jackson. Is it is it numbered? Jackson. It is not numbered. Oh, but still, I was like, wow, I was surprised it wasn't with the double. Oh. Cedric Mullins, Freddie Freeman. That's and we have a big bang insert. That's another gorgeous insert of Aaron Judge. Oh wow. Yeah, that's oh, a cool sick. card. <laughs> All right. Let's see what you got with that last pack mojo. All right. Hopefully there's some good stuff because I only got one numbered card, but thankfully it was at 25. Yeah. So we got Josh Donaldson, Manny Machado, Jose Abreu, All right, another good there. rookie, Stephen Kwan. Nice. We'll go, oh, the red, to the too. Right on. Yeah, we'll go to the back. We have Juan Soto, oh, All right, Salvador right. Perez, red foil. Hey, be, and, hey, let's see these cards. There we go. There we are. Sorry, I was a little behind there. Oh, the new age. I got and new age, Ronald Acuna Jr. All right. What's our auto? All right, here is our auto. I see it. No whammy, no whammy. Mm. MJ Melendez, Kansas City Royals. Auto, not numbered. Not exactly who we wanted, but an auto nonetheless. Right. Um, and there you have it. 2022 Panini Capstone Baseball. This is the debut edition. Uh, we'll see if uh, they end up bringing it back for 2023. Um, but yeah, that's a rip and review. So hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, and uh, I'm happy to do this for you guys. So uh, tune in next time on Rip and Review. And don't forget to tune in each and every Saturday uh, as we debut a new edition of Rip and Review. Um, each and every at Saturday six, morning. It's 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern. Yeah. And there you have it. That was another edition of what, Kevin? Rip and Review with Angelo Trinidad. <laughs> All right. So that is the Baseball Brew Crew podcast for this week. Thank you for joining us. Here's where you can find us on all the social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. Guys, any last word before we sign off for this week? I just want to say, keep coming back. We got great content. We've got the rip and review. We've got this day in baseball history. Keep an eye out for hazy history. We're cooking up a good one. Uh, we enjoy you guys coming here and being part of this show, and we love you. Thank you. Yeah, and don't forget to tune in each and every Saturday morning, 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, as we debut a new edition of Rip and Review. Go ahead and, uh, and visit the archives and watch last week's video uh, where um, I opened up uh, some new packs. And this uh, upcoming Saturday, we'll be opening up some 2022 Donruss Optic Baseball. So that'll be exciting. Um, and uh, stay tuned to our socials and to our YouTube channel for some upcoming content and videos. Again, all will be in attendance at the Front Row Card Show in Las Vegas, Nevada, February 4th and 5th at the Tuscany Casino. So if you happen to find yourself in the Las Vegas area at the Front Row Card Show, come find me, say hello. Let's make a trade. Let's make a deal. And uh, let's uh, and let's create some good content. Or if you are here around by me in Anaheim, California, February 3rd, 4th, and 5th, is Radiant Beer Company's second anniversary party. Sorry, Angelo. But, you know, if you're not dealing and wheeling with cards in Vegas, hoping we got Anaheim where you can maybe wheel and deal some beers with me because I'm sure I'll be there the entire time because, you, live you know, they're going to wake me up out of bed at some point and I'm going to be like, hey, you have, you have beers for me? All right, I'm here. But honestly, they're a great brewery. They're definitely friends of ours. And uh, so we want to celebrate them. And, you know... Good times all around that weekend. Sounds the best weekend of the year already, guys. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, uh, for you, Radiant Beer Company is an Airbnb, and both Bs are for beer. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to you. We will see you next week with another Baseball Brew Crew podcast. Take care, everyone. Good night.